So you finally got an interview in this terrible job market. In this video, I'm gonna to try to do everything I can to help you get ready for that interview. So before we even drive to the interview, I want you to do three things to prepare. The first thing is to use Google and LinkedIn to learn everything that you can about the company. You can't imagine the number of people that come to interview with someone in HR or the hiring manager when we ask if they know anything about the company that don't have any details or background. It shows that they don't really care about the position that they're coming into. So definitely research the company in advance. Second thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is to make sure you know what pay band you're gonna be looking for for this role. Generally, they're never going to make you an offer in the actual interview, but I have had a lot of hiring managers ask people before, so what are you looking for as far as compensation for this role? So the proper way to answer that is to say, with the positions that I'm currently interviewing for, I'm in the X to Y range. And so uh, that will give them a couple of cues. One is that you're competitive in the market, you're interviewing with other companies and that they can't mess around and they need to move on you. And the second is that you have a clearly defined pay band uh, as to what you're looking for for this role. And then the last thing that you wanna do is to make sure that you have printed copies of your resume and that it's either formatted with Microsoft Word or ChatGPT. And the reason that this is really important, even if you think they already have your resume, is because on a lot of hiring platforms such as Indeed, you actually fill out the resume right within the site. And when the company gets it, it's actually in a big block of text with your information. So they might not have seen a nice, clear formatted copy of your resume, and one or more people within that meeting might have forgot to print it or just haven't seen copies of that resume. So make sure you bring several printed copies that are ready to go. Now, for the actual interview, I want you to show up a half an hour early to the physical location. You're not gonna go in yet. But the reason for that is you haven't been there before. You don't know what the parking situation is gonna be like. You don't know where exactly you're gonna to have to go. And especially if you haven't been to this area before, you might get lost and you might need a little time to be able to make up to get where you're supposed to be going. Then to the actual interview, you wanna walk in between 10 and 15 minutes before the interview time. So if you've got a nine o'clock interview, you wanna walk in between 8.45 and 8.50. You don't wanna walk in before that because it leaves them in a weird position of what to do with you. Meaning that if you come in and they have an administrative person that's sitting in the lobby, for instance, when you walk in, they might say, hi, hey, I'll let the hiring manager know that you're here. If you show up 20 to 30 minutes early, it becomes awkward. They feel like they need to talk to you in 20 to 30 minutes with somebody that you're not gonna be working directly for. You can run out of things to talk to them with. It just creates a weird situation. So um, 15 minutes is about perfect. It shows that you're gonna be respectful of the time and that you're there early. And this way, if you have to fill out anything or they have to walk you through a security area or you, know, you have to figure out where the suite is, that you you have enough time to do that after your walk-in. Now, when you get to the actual interview, one question that I want you to be ready for that's very common in interviews is, so tell us a little about yourself. What you don't want to do when you get this question is launch into an immediate play-by-play -play of in your entire work history. What they're trying to do is get a sense of you as a person here. So you might say, oh, I grew up here. Um, you know, this is uh, kind of what my family structure looks like, and that's kind of how I got into this, which led me into this. And then you can kind of start to, to direct it towards your career journey so that they get kind of a picture of who you are as a person. You don't want to get anything real personal here, but just give them a little bit of background on yourself, or maybe if you grew up playing a sport or, or things like that, those are just fun interpersonal things that people will chat about and can build some type of a connection. But if you just launch right into your career history, they don't really get a chance to get to know you at all and connect with you. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't do is during the course of the interview, a lot of times they don't take any notes. So I would bring, if you have kind of a, a folder that you have your materials in and you can get them at Staples for like 10 bucks, on one side I have uh, copies of your resume and on the other side I have a notepad and my own pen uh, along with you because, um, and just as a tip, bring a couple of pens, put a couple more in your jacket pocket or purse, whatever you have with you, because nothing is, is more embarrassing than to sit there and to start to try to write and then your pen doesn't write because it quits. And a lot of times somebody that comes to the interview, they might've forgot their pen. So if you've got a couple, you'd be like, oh, here, if they wanna make a note, it shows you're prepared. So 
Um, as the interview goes, don't be afraid to make a couple of notes. Obviously, you want to look them in the eye, build connection, pay attention, but writing a couple of notes shows that you actually care about what they're saying and you're trying to keep track of it and try to keep everything straight. Then, um, as the interview goes through, um, don't wait until the end of interview to ask all of your questions. So as you guys are having kind of a, a play by play, you're going back and forth in the dialogue, don't be afraid to ask questions about what they're saying. It shows a real interest and shows that you care about the position and that um, you're actually looking to move forward with it. And save a question or two for the end. And the kind of questions that you wanna save for the end of the interview are gonna be things about what their expectations look like for this role. So a common one that I found really effective that a lot of people will use is, if you were to look six months down the road at this role um, and someone was really successful, what would that look like to you? That's, that's a good one to ask the hiring manager. Another one that you can ask is, what are the uh, main priorities for this role in the first 90 days? That way, and listen carefully when they're talking to you about this. When they're talking about the main priorities in the 90 days, those are the things that are gonna be critical to them to move the needle. So no matter what else is going on in the organization once you actually get in the role, they have told you what's important to them to make sure that you focus on so that you can get a good lasting first impression within the role. Then before you leave the interview, um, it's really important that you ask them, hey, um, can I get your email to send a thank you note? And make sure you get emails from anybody there, especially if there's more than one person in, uh, in the interview. Um, and can I get your interview as well, sir or ma'am? The reason for that is because uh, you wanna be able to send a thank you note. And if you apply through like LinkedIn, Zip, Indeed, a lot of those have their own email that you get in their system. And so you want the direct email for these people. Now. Once you've you know shaken their hands and you know saying thank you so much for your time, either when you go to the car, if you can do it professionally from your phone, or as soon as you get home, I want you to send a brief thank you email to the people uh, that you interviewed with that day. Hey, it was great to meet you. Really enjoyed getting to know the team. I'm definitely interested in this position and looking forward to next steps. Thanks, and then your name. Uh, and the reason you wanna do this right away is it just reinforces to them, oh, you know, this person's serious, they know how to follow up. Follow up is really important in a lot of jobs. So it shows that you can do that and that you have a genuine interest in moving forward. Right now, uh, when you guys are going to interview, I would say full suit if you can, or, um, you know, nice um, uh, blouse and dress for ladies or suit, whatever you prefer. Um, but overdress for the role. There's a lot of competition for roles right now and really dressing up, I think makes you look serious. Um, but I wouldn't go as far as to wear a tie. I think ties are a little bit um, extra and overplayed right now. I, I don't see a lot of people wearing them to interviews. So I hope all these tips help. Um, if you guys have other tips that will really you know, be important to people that do finally get interviews and um, are trying to get into jobs, please put them below and let everybody know how they can best prepare themselves so that they'll be successful too. I know it's a tough job market right now, but I hope these videos help. I'm gonna keep them coming and I'll see you guys in the next one.